Hi, my name is Savannah Schneider, and I will be doing Hermia's monologue from Midsummer Night's Dream, Act Two, Scene Two. Help me, my sender, help me to thy best to pluck this crawling serpent from my breast. I am me, what a pity, for what a dream was here. My sender, look how I do quake with fear. I thought a serpent eat my heart away, and you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander! What? Removed? Lysander! Oh, Lord! What, out of hearing? Gone? No sound? No word? Alack, where are you? Speak, and if you hear, speak of all loves, I swoon almost with fear. No? Well, then I will perceive all that nigh, either death, or I'll find you immediately. Thank you. Hello. My name is Connor Ruff Miller, and I'll be doing a monologue from A Midsummer Night's Dream. When my cue comes, call me and I will answer. My next is most fair, Pyramus. Hi ho, Peter Quince. Flute the bellows mender. Snout the tinker. Starveling. God's my life stolen hence and left me asleep. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream. Methought I was. There is no man can tell what me thought I was. And me thought I had. But man is but a patched fool if you will offer to say what me thought I had. The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste. His tongue to conceive. Nor his heart to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream because it hath no bottom. And I will sing it in the latter end of a play. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rhea Hogan, and I'm going to be doing Sonnet 94. They that have the power to hurt and will do none, they do not do the thing they most do show, who moving others are themselves as stone, unmoved, cold, and to temptation slow. They rightly do inherit heaven's graces and husband nature's riches from expense. They're the lords and owners of their faces, others but stewards from their excellence. The summer's flower is to the summer's sweet, though to itself it only live and die. But if that flower with base infection, the basest weed outbraves his dignity. For sweetest things turn sourest by their deeds. Lilies that fester smell far worse than weeds. Thank you. Hi, my name is Emily Klarenbach, and I will be doing the lion monologue from A Midsummer Night's Dream. You, ladies, you, whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on the floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here, when lion rough and wildest rage doth roar, then know that I, one snuck the joiner, am a lion fell, nor else no lion's dam, for if I, should as lion, come in strife into this place, Swear pity on my life. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Josh, uh, and I'm going to be doing a monologue from King Lear. I'm going to be doing uh, Act Two, Scene Four. Uh, just a quick note, I'm going to be doing this in as close to original pronunciation as possible, so it's going to be slightly different than um, 
I guess uh, anybody else has got uh, an accent. So um, this scene takes place after uh, King Lear is told that um, he's questioned as to why he needs so many uh, bodyguards for um, a particular reason. So, who raisin not the need? Or basis beggars are in their poorest things superfluous. Although not nature more than nature needs, men's life's as cheap as base. Thou art a lady, if only he's who go warm were gorgeous. <laughs> Nature needs not what thou gorgeous worst, which scarcely keeps thee warm. But for true need, you hence give me that patience, patience I need. You see me here, you gods, a poor old man. Is full of grief as age, wretched in both. If it be you that stir these daughters' hearts against their father, fill me not so much to bear it tamely. Touch me with noble anger, and let not woman's weapons, water drops, stain my man's cheeks. No, you are natural hags. I will have such revenges on you both that all the world shall. <laughs> I will do such things, but they are yet I know not, but they shall be the terrors of the earth. You think I'll weep? No, I'll not weep. I have full cause of weeping, but this art shall break into a hundred thousand flaws, or ere I'll weep. Oh fool, I shall go mad. Thank you. Hi, I'm Linda. I'm going to be doing Viola's monologue from Twelfth Night, Act Two, Scene Two. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much that Shermie thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me, sure. <laughs> the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring. Why, he sent her none. I am the man. Well, if it be so as tis poor lady, she had better love a dream. Disguise. I see thou art a wickedness in which the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we, for such as we are made of, such we be. How will this badge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, Fond as much on him. A and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day, what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? Oh, time. <laughs> Thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I will be doing Lady Macbeth's monologue from Act One, Scene Five of Macbeth. Glamis thou art, and Cawdor, and shalt be what thou art promised, yet do I fear thy nature. 
It is too full of milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way thou wouldst be great. Art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thou'st have great glamours, that which cries, thus thou must do if thou have it, and that which rather thou dost fear to do, than wishest should be undone. Hie thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysic lay doth see to have thee crowned withal. Thank you. Okay, and thank you everybody for joining us thank this you. afternoon. Thank you. For thank our you. Shakespeare monologues from our yes. Shakespeare class. Class registration is open now online for the month of June. So check out all the classes that Gettysburg Community Theater is offering online. Thanks everybody and have a great afternoon. Bye.